Hey everybody, this is Five of Clubs, and welcome to another episode of Simpleton Solos, a series in which a simpleton plays one of his most anticipated board games. After we took down the Labyrinth Thoros, our titans were beset by the Hermesian Pursuer, and he's done pursuing. Now he's here to torment the titans with his creepy pincher pokers and no doubt nonsense galore. But before we get rolling, and definitely not to put off the dreaded encounter as long as possible, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Into the Unknown and the amazing ATO community who showed massive support for my last episode. And thanks for the rules clarifications regarding the bullfight as well. I hope to have an easier time with that going forward. And uh, I want to thank my sponsor for today's episode, um, uh, Cheese. Without support from Cheese, we wouldn't be able to... Alright, I'm out of stalling tactics. Let's show this prehistoric how we do things downtown. We are back with another episode of Aeon Trespass Odyssey, and I'm really looking forward to today's episode because we are going to fight this bird, creepy bird face, claw armed pursuer, Hermesian pursuer. I've never faced this guy. I don't know what he does yet, but I guess we are about to find out. I'm told uh, this battle is maybe meant to be lost, or at least uh, you're not intended to breeze through it anyway. Okay, so. We are fighting a level 1 Pursuer. Uh, you hit him on an 8+, plus. his movement of 6, but actually, according to the Winged Doom trait, he has unlimited speed, so that 6 really doesn't matter, I think. Uh, and then 10 health, but actually, we are fighting him while he is toying, uh, or teasing, I'm sorry, while he is teasing here. You play ball like a girl! <laughs> where apparently we have two battle conditions here. The Hermesian Pursuer leaves the battle as soon as, and this counts as a loss, one, uh, the first battle, it kills a Titan, and then second, this, this, and that. Or you may end the battle as soon as, count as a wind, the first battle, Titan deals five wounds. So essentially we only have to do half of his health, and then he'll end up running off like a coward. So, or maybe that's a, a mercy at this point in the game. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, he has many traits here. Kill joys the first if you completely evade or block an attack or reduce all danger from an attack to zero. Permanently lose one piece of gear. Okay. So, it looks like uh, you might want to take at least one danger if you want to keep uh, your gear or else it is lost, which is, uh, ugh, that's so good. Uh, I assume you get to pick the piece of gear that's lost, but... Um, it doesn't say, like, one random piece of gear. All right, and Winged Doom, which is another trait. Hermesian Pursuer has unlimited speed, so that six stat really doesn't matter too much. It should be a little infinity sign, I guess, with that trait active. Uh, then he has Ambrosia Poisoning. If you gain five or more Ambrosia tokens, you die. Reminds me a bit of how uh, Bleed in Kingdom Death works, where it doesn't really do a whole lot by itself, but it does uh, when it builds up to that five value. And uh, Tease, which we already have in play, End of Hope. At the end of the primordial round, perform his signature card. But because the Hermesian Pursuer is teasing us, he gains the toying trait, which uh, says all Hermesian Pursuer attacks lose uh, one die when you're rolling them, one, minus one danger to a minimum of one, and the end of hope trait. So it actually doesn't do the end of hope uh, trait up here, which means that it does not get to perform its signature at the end of every round, which uh, is likely uh, a blessing. I actually kept most of our builds uh, pretty much consistent with maybe a few things swapped uh, here and there between various titans, but for the most part, if you saw my, uh, not screaming antelope, if you saw my Labyrinthoros playthrough, you should be familiar with most of what everyone else is holding here. Okay, and uh, the board looks a bit like the... Uh, the Hecatons uh, board with a bunch of these little columns everywhere, but also these new terrain tiles called Ambrosia Pools. They're two by two tiles. Uh, you do not collide with the Ambrosia Pool. If you move through an Ambrosia Pool, you gain one Ambrosia token on a six plus. If you end your involuntary move on an Ambrosia Pool, gain an Ambrosia token. So like, I guess involuntary move would be like pushback or knockback. If you, gain, uh, if you end your turn on an Ambrosia Pool, Gain one Ambrosia token. Okay, so we really want to try and stay away from these Ambrosial pools. I'm not sure whether or not this bird uh, beastie is going to allow that, but uh, we can only hope. I don't know what's going on with his stomach there either. It's kind of hard to make out the details, but maybe there's something interesting there. Okay, well, as always, uh, the AI gets to go first, or the monster gets to go first. Let's give these a shuffle. 
disdain the empty eyes of the creature spell your future oh yes indeed and they're crouched like no stop don't do this uh target target the priority target inside oh yeah we do need to set our priority target uh, at this point in the game, I'm not sure it really matters. Last time around, there was someone I really actually wanted to have it from the get-go. But, uh, hmm. I mean, I guess probably we want it to be one of the guys with our defense up here. Let's say Solon. Solon is our priority target. Yes, indeed. Right. Uh, judge. At 6 plus fate, it would enact the Killjoy ability, which thankfully does not. Test courage or will. One hit, gain fear. Two hits, gain dread. Three hits, die okay um courage and will i'm not sure what uh what those are going to be or like uh, maybe those add to the the die roll somehow maybe uh because that those are, are traits that the characters have um i know like some of them for instance it looks like otis zero the pilot of solon has courage one uh you know we have wisdom one over here and uh, i believe the sales spell is also grants courage so hmm I wonder if that means that you get to add courage to these rolls. Let me take a peek in the rule book just to check. After these messages, we'll be right back. All right, friends. So I actually went and combed through the rule book over here. I went page by page scanning, looking for an explanation of what those keywords mean in regards to an attack. And uh, unfortunately, I was not able to figure it out. So, I'm not sure what the courage or will here actually does. My gut suspicion is that it's supposed to add to the attack roll. Like, if you have two courage, you would get the bonus for having courage. Whereas, if you didn't have any courage, it would be zero. So, I'm going to play as though that's the case. And that's my guess. And uh, we'll see what happens. So, depending on who he attacks up here, I guess he'll do the priority target, which is Solon. And as such, Solon will uh, be able to apply, let's see, Courage 1 here and Courage 1 from the sales spell list. So that's two Courages, which might be good. Hmm. Well, let's see. Um, yes, so that would be plus two to the roll. I get to roll three dice, which actually, uh, let's not forget, this is going to be, I moved it over here so I could actually try to remember. It's minus one dice, so it's two dice hitting on eight, uh, eight plus. So let's... Uh, Go ahead and do that. And actually, you know what? I just noticed something. If we had all three of those dice rolling, guess what? If it was three hits, you would just straight up die. So it looks like the worst that can happen is dread. Uh, the least bad thing, or the only one hit, would result in fear. Let's see. Okay, so I have a 10 and a 4. So I dodge one hit. So I have one hit coming my way, which is going to net me fear. It looks like instead of this doing just straight damage, it's going to give me the fear condition. After judgment, move to the center of the board, then turn to face the most titans. Well, okay, I guess it's going to move one space back to the center of the board. Okay, so maybe that's why uh, it tests these, because it actually just straight up inflicts these conditions instead of uh, dealing any sort of danger. So let's go ahead and get a fear card for our friend. But, well, let's think about this, though. Because we do have two rerolls here, and of course we can spend fate to reroll. But let me make sure. Let's see how this works with the. No, not that. Uh, with this trait up here, yes. If you completely evade or block an attack, or reduce all. Okay, so th this. If I use the rerolls and ended up evading this full attack, I would lose one of my pieces of gear. So I guess let's chalk it up and compare it to what we have for a fear issue. Let's see. Gain minus two precision tokens. Wound. Discard this card. Minus two precision tokens and gain plus one precision token. Mm. He already has plus two, so that kind of offsets the fear. So you know what? Let's actually keep it. Uh, that might be a huge mistake, but I guess we'll find out. All right. This is our first go against this guy. So, you know, we, we might make some missteps since we don't know what the heck we're doing. All right. The Hermesian Pursuer has returned. After disdaining uh, our poor friend Solon. And that's it. Okay, so that card wasn't too bad. I mean, it's it's bad, but it's not, you know, end of the world. So, uh, in any case, it's our turns to go. Hmm. Let's see. Well, who would like to go first? 
I think we might want to leave one or two uh, precision tokens or opening tokens in the pool if we can. So maybe we'll actually have... No, I'll tell you what we'll do. We will have Ulysses go first, trying to hit with one of these weapons. And then we're going to have her leave behind one or two openings. And then, uh, hopefully, our friend over here will be able to capitalize on that with whale knives to leave a bunch of hits, which will then convert to openings, which we can then use on Solon to try to score a hit and get rid of our fear condition, huh? How about that? Look at that. There's some thinking. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. But before we actually gain our rage and whatnot, uh, I do have one fate because we have the make sheath back again. Hmm. Before we gain our one rage, let's actually move first because we want to get some distance. I'm not sure what hit responses are we are in for. So let's go maybe one, two, three, four. Right there. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six range. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go ahead and use one fate to use our ballista gun at plus two. Here we go. Oh, that's a one. That's garbage. Oh, and let's get one rage. Let's spend that to a reroll. I was really hoping for that nine, actually. Okay, the three plus two is five, which is not going to do it because we actually have eight this time instead of the seven that we were granted from our friends before. Wow. Okay, what a productive turn. And by that, I mean not. So I may end up doing this. Oh, actually, I rotated that the wrong way. I could pay one fate and exhaust this card to immediately break one or open one. So let's put an opening token out there. There we go. And now our friend Herodotus will hit on 7+, plus, which is uh, a bit easier to get than the 8+. plus. So let's try that. Herodotus, here we go. Except I know you're going to have to be... Oh, I see. A lot of these adjacency spots put you very nearby, those Ambrosia pools. Ugh, not fun. Okay, well, he's going to go behind him and maybe uh, slicing at those... Um, Creepy wings might uh, net us some benefits. We have one seven, which is going to be one hit. Let's get a rage. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and spend one of these trying to reroll. Maybe we can get a second hit. Uh, or we could not. I think we really have to play aggressively against this guy. So maybe we could do Okay, good. So we have two hits here, which is going to net us one. It's going to net us opening one for each of those hits, which is good. And uh, additionally, it's going to let us roll three of these red dice. But let's see what it is we're actually rolling them against, shall we? The small moth wing. Oh, so they're moth wings. Okay, I did think they were creepy looking, but I did not realize they were moth wings. Are they broken at the end? Some of these, like the, the patterns on them, it looks almost as though uh, the, the wings are, are incomplete, but I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, wow. Small moth wing has armor value of four. Okay, you're starting out with a four. To be honest, I don't know if there are any threes or twos in there. It might be fours and fives, uh, since this guy's supposed to be tough. Fail. Immediately draw and resolve a flare card. I do remember seeing the flare card near his character board, so I suppose uh, that is something we will do if we fail. And on a wound, knock back seven, knock down, which would push us through the ambrosia pool. But uh, it would get us a wound, so... Um, we don't have any re-rolls available to us. We get to leave one rage token per our Kratos table here, uh, since we are at one rage, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, okay. All right, so we had uh, one break and three potentials, and no tokens to capitalize on those potentials, so unfortunately that's not going to do any good. So as a fail, immediately draw and resolve a flare card, and these uh, are the flare cards. It's a side deck for this monster. Apparently the wings have these little hypnotic uh, swirly symbols, and so I guess I'll shuffle that and draw one. Ambrosia Drain. If there are three plus Ambrosia tokens in play, Pursuer heals one wound. They are not. If this ability didn't trigger, move the Pursuer to the center of the board, turn it to face the most Titans, and perform Signature. Uh-oh. Well, okay, so he's going to face the most Titans. He is currently doing so, and he's in the center of board. Pincer Strike is his signature. Precise and deadly. It looks as though he's snip-snip kind of thing going on here. Target closest Titan in front in range. Okay. Uh, let's see. So closest Titan in front in range. It's a tie, but he does have the priority target token. So I guess he will be the tiebreaker. And then, uh, you know what? Actually, though, this is not four dice. This is three dice because we have the toying trait, thankfully. Okay. 
uh, move and attack each hit does two danger but actually it does one danger per hit because of the toying trait yet again so we're doing three dice you have to dodge on a 10 plus and uh it's going to deal one danger a piece so three of these right here let's go ahead and roll and of course we do have our two re-rolls here here we go let's go ahead and use those might as well give it a try six four and two none of those unfortunately are going to uh evade so knowing that that is the case what's going to happen to us we're going to take three danger of course and then potentially if you have three fate or more other terrible things will happen so uh but right now let's go ahead and get our danger there we go three danger it is and uh i suppose that will net us one of these minor trauma cards we don't have fate here at all so that means we're not going to trigger the secondary effect which is good maze emergence place an l labyrinth under your titan oh boy the maze is back oh and i should mention about the maze um apparently i was maze crazy in my previous playthrough and uh, if you read the comments there uh, i found out i was placing a lot more than i should have been so um one thing to keep in mind is that uh you will not have to place anywhere near... Oh, my. Let's try this here. Okay. We'll set that right there. Okay. Yes. Uh, one thing is you will not have to place anywhere near as many of those uh, tokens there, which means that the board will be a bit easier to maneuver around uh, in, which is uh, certainly a reprieve, by my opinion. So, Okay. So we uh, took our lumps here from the pincer strike. And I suppose, uh, since we did hit, we will get to leave some opening tokens. So we spent that one. Let's leave two openings because we got two hits on this thing. And let's leave a break as well for our actual Kratos bonus here. That way, whoever's going next is going to have uh, essentially two of these uh, openings to add to their precision and then uh, one break. So... Maybe knowing that, we might want to have Solon go because those two tokens up there are going to negate the minus two precision, which means I'm at a plus two value, meaning uh, that's a long way of saying that I hit on a six plus against the monster right now. So maybe we might want to uh, go ahead and give that a try. Hmm. Yeah, let's uh, let's do it. How about? All right. Let's see. Oh, and you know what? He. Oh, but you know. Oh, I don't want to use back away because if I backed away, guess what? I'm just stepping right into this mucky pool of ambrosia, which uh, is bad. Okay. Uh, I will move one, two, three right there. And I will swing my boat mace at the broad side of our friend here. And we are going to hope it's enough. A nine. Okay. Yeah, that's a hit. Yeah, even without... Actually, no, I guess we do need these uh, since we do have the issues down there all right what are we hitting the large moth wing okay makes sense we we missed this small one so if we aim a little larger perhaps uh we can get the hit a fail is going to result in a knockback 10 and knockdown and the wound likewise is going to result in knockback 7 and knockdown okay so it's going to be a uh, knockdown one way or the other okay all right we do have one break up there we're going to get to roll uh, two reds and a third red here, and let's make sure we get our rage so we don't uh, miss out on the bonuses. Let's roll and come on. Ooh, look at that. Two, four, five. That is going to surpass the four that we have here. Yes, indeed. Resulting in a wound. Boom. Let us escalate before we forget because we are keen to do that. One, two, three. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And knock back seven and knock down. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bam. There we go. And uh, yes. So a number of things are going to happen. So the knock back seven knocked us through an ambrosia, uh, ambrosia pit. Meaning we have to roll this and potentially get an ambrosia token. Ah, no, we do not. <laughs> Despite tumbling through it, I guess this, the rate of speed at which we were thrust across the battlefield was enough to uh, prevent that ambrosia from sticking to our titan skin uh additionally i guess that's actually about it but we do need to leave tokens behind uh i do have one free break that i get to leave behind pursuant to the break ability right here and i get to also leave one per the rage bonus oh and i should put this back hmm i could do one of each maybe yeah, one of each seems like it's not a bad idea. Okay, so we got one, 
accuracy token in one break token. Very good. Okay. Boom. And uh, last but not least, we have Philoctera, who has uh, quite the weapon. The Great Tree Club hits pretty hard, so maybe if we're lucky, we can deal out some punishment on this creature. We have one rage. We're actually technically going to move up first. One, two, three. And uh, you know what? We'll turn this way just so that we can fit it. Uh, the collision on this figure is a little uh, rough, uh, depending on which spaces you're in. So, moving right along, we are going to roll one of these. We get to uh, hit on a 7 plus. So let us roll. <gasps> a 10? We have a crit chance against this thing? Oh yeah. It's all coming together. Oh, no way. That would be too epic. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. Oh! <laughs> yeah, even with all those dice, I don't think this is possible at all. Abnormally broad shoulders, and indeed, they are abnormally broad. At least we can get this out of the way. Fail, resolve the killjoy effect, and uh, wound. Move to the center of the board. Turn to face the most titans. Perform signature. Wait a minute, killjoy? That's the one... Why would you, how would you resolve Killjoy if you completely evade or block an attack and reduce all danger from an attack to zero permanently lose a piece of gear? How would you resolve a Killjoy right now? We're not... This seems like a defensive thing. Hmm. Yeah, if you, as in the Titan, completely evade or block an attack or reduce all danger from an attack to zero permanently lose one piece of gear. Huh. Fail Killjoy. Does that mean that, like, it attacks? I'm not sure. Well, let's roll and see if we're even going to need it. We're going to get to roll two reds and a black. And you know what? Actually, even doing the math, even if I got two, two, and then this face right here, the closest I could get is seven. Uh, so rolling is almost, I don't know, it's not worth doing at this point, I think. Darn, and that's too bad because that critical would have been uh, pretty cool. Looks like another Titan would have been able to perform a follow-up attack. Move to the center of the board, turn to face the Titan before signature. Okay, well, Killjoy. Maybe that just means I just straight up lose a piece of gear. Maybe that's what it means. And I assume the fists do not count as gear. Yeah, maybe Killjoy just straight up makes you lose a piece of gear, which I'm going to lose because no matter what I roll up here, uh, you can't possibly get eight out of it. So, what should I lose? The Sales Bolus, I think, is good to have on hand, but... Mm. Alright, Siren Armor it is because the Sales Bolus will help get us out of dodge. So, okay, well, uh, I guess we just straight up lose it. There's no uh, if, and, or, but about it. I guess. May, I'm sure I'll uh, receive some clarification afterwards, but I'm playing as though you just straight up lose the gear, because we are not. We don't get to even try to defend or anything like that. Okay, but uh, that means we do unfortunately lose these, because we use them for the attack, which would have been a crit. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, since I attacked with that, I should spend one fate. Uh, hmm. Let's see. I suppose we could leave... With uh, 8 to hit is really hard, so I guess we're really going to have to probably do that to even make it feasible. Uh, the next level is a, or the next card is a level 1, so at least there's that. Okay, so I think that is everybody's turn. Everybody has gone, meaning that it is now the terrible Pursuer's turn to go. Here we go. Ambrosia Touch. Oh, his arm appears to be dripping with uh, sticky ambrosia. The thick black liquid pours from the creature's belly onto its long pinchers. Oh, so that's why its belly is so weird. Perhaps its belly produces ambrosia somehow. All right, target the titan in the blind spot. Uh-oh. I think that might be our friend Herobrotus. Yep, sure is. Oh, boy. Herobrotus, you're about to get slimed, my friend. Okay. There we go. Move and attack. It's going to be a two dice attack because we are being toyed with and each hit does one danger. But at three plus fate, you would roll an extra. Let's see. Uh, he does not have three plus fate yet. Ooh, he's close though. For each hit, gain one Ambrosia token. After attack, if danger was dealt, push back four and then knock down. Okay. Ugh. Yikes. All right. All right. Let's do some evading. Come on. Eight and three. I kind of... Well, the eight works. Alright, so I did evade one hit. I'm going to have to take the other unless I want to lose gear from Killjoy, so 
I guess I'm going to take one danger, which is going to net me one Ambrosia token. And let's see if I can... These are Ambrosia tokens, apparently. So I'll get one of those. There we go. Or I'll set it over here. All right, and let us get a danger, my friend, which is going to net us a minor trauma card. Place an L Labyrinth under your Titan. Well, okay, I guess the maze is here to stay. Uh, hmm. Well, this can be kind of good. So actually, hold on. This is actually pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and get that L piece as we were planning. Do we want to put it in a different orientation? You know what? Maybe we want to do it... I can't. Nope, sure can't. All right, so I guess it's going to do like this under the creature. Oh, wait, never mind. I can do it like that if I wanted. You know what? Maybe that's even better. Maybe. All right, so he's going to push. He's going to move forward and push me one. There we go. And then he's going to do more pushbacks. Now, when he, push back, when he pushes back against two different figures, I... Maybe he does like that. So I'll push back two more spaces apiece. Or this person, whoops. Or uh, our friend right here is supposed to be like trampled on over here. I don't know. Like in Kingdom Death, when you do the, the white lion fight, if like the white lion moves and does grab, as far as I know, it would grab both people and treat them the same. So it's, I could see the logic for why pushback would happen for both of these, but I could also see logic why maybe he's focused on one target and would just stomp on the other one, maybe. I'm not sure what is intended here. I'll play it this way because it makes the most intuitive sense to me, uh, but I may actually have resolved that wrong and this person should be over here knocked down. Actually, you know what? Yeah, for the tie break, let's do this. That's worse for me. So that if I end up being wrong, then uh, I ended up making it harder on myself rather than easier, right? So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, distribute these cards here. And uh, Herobrotus is going to be knocked down. And you get a knockdown. Alright, sorry about that. So one thing I noticed before I went and got too far ahead of myself uh, was the fact that Solon... Um, Wounded, of course, and I forgot Solon had the fear card, which uh, when you wound, discard this card and the minus two precision tokens, you gain a plus one precision token going forward. So now that I have a plus one precision token, what that means is uh, I'm going to be able to attack at uh, seven plus to hit, whereas everyone else normally attacks at eight plus, and that will, of course, stack with any opening tokens out here. Additionally, I should probably move this priority target token where it belongs. This person got the first rage, and uh, no one has passed two rage yet. So I suppose Ulyssia is the current raged target. Anyway, sorry about that. Now, let us continue on with what in the world is happening to our friends. Uh, yes, and the knockdown, of course, happens. Right, so knockdown, knockdown, and knockdown. Uh, Solon, thankfully, does have some boots. Let's get rid of that card. Has some boots to stand himself up, but due to how far away he is, uh, it may just make sense for him to lay there and uh, stand up naturally instead of spending the fate. But uh, in any case, now that that card is done, it's going to be our turns once more. And we only have one opening token up here. Then again, a lot of folks are still laying on their behinds. So uh, Herodotus laying on his behind. Philoctera laying on his behind. And let's go ahead and flip their knockdown cards. Ulyssia is not laying on her behind. I'm sorry, Solon laying on his behind. And Ulyssia is over here and a bit at range. So we could go maybe move three. And then we could try once more to attack with that Ballista gun. Here we go. That's a three. Plus two is five. Plus one is six. Not going to cut it. So we'd have to spend one more fate here. Come on, Ulyssia. 7 plus 2 is 9 plus 1 is 10. That will hit, thankfully. Uh, unfortunately, we're not rolling a whole lot of dice, are we, though? So, uh, hmm. I guess we'll see what happens here. A 5, darn it. Arm pincer. And yes, indeed, it's this long shafted arm here, uh, as portrayed in many of the cards. Fail, immediately draw and resolve a flare card. Uh-oh. Wound, perform signature against the attacker. Hmm. 
Well, uh, so I have two dice here, and I've got to get five plus. I think even if I rolled a two and a two, that's all I can get. And we don't have a break token up there, so no matter what, it's not going to wound. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll resolve the, the uh, fail response. Immediately draw and resolve a flare card. Uh, as far as the flare cards go, I don't know if these are supposed to, like, shuffle back in after you do them, or if you clear out this deck and then go from there. Did it say anywhere? Yep, I don't know. Um, it seems like... I don't know, it could go either way. Let's play as though you shuffle again and redraw. Because that, to me, that seems like that would be the hardest, because some that are really bad, you have the chance of running into more than once. Uh, per four cards. Ambrosia Drain. If there are three plus Ambrosia tokens in play, there are only one. Pursuer heals a wound. If this ability didn't trigger, move the Pursuer to the center of the board, turn it to face the most Titans and perform signature. And it says move it to the center of the board, which means he's going to stomp on our friend over here. One, two, three. Oh, actually right here is where he would stop. Excuse me. There we go. So that means Philoctra is taking yet another danger. Ugh. No fun. Getting stepped on by those spindly legs. And uh, we have to perform the signature, which is the pincer strike. Three dice, target closest, Titan in front, in range. Uh, I suppose he sort of turned this, he turned to look this way when he walked. In front, in range. Uh, that person is in range because he has unlimited movement. So, poor Solon, oh no! Yikes, uh, and Solon is going to roll three dice each hit doing one danger apiece, and at three or more fate, knock back seven to the right, and then knock down. Well, Solon's already knocked down, so I guess I'm glad I didn't stand up, uh, but no fate actually currently exists there, so we'll get three of these, and we'll roll. We have five, seven, and five. I get two re-rolls. I suppose I can use those. A 10 is going to dodge. That's good. In It's a critical evade, which is going to allow me to leave two opening tokens in there. Maybe it's not so bad he attacked Solon after all. Although, uh, given how far away he is from everyone else, uh, their turns won't be that, uh, that productive, I suppose. Okay, so that's going to net me with two danger. And uh, I believe that's it. Yes, two danger. And... That's going to get me a major trauma card, though. Come on, be a good one, please. Please. Flood of Memories. Add a meh to a Nemos card and then exhaust it. Okay, right. Let's try one that is a demo friendly, shall we? Dolos Cunning. Leave three opening or break tokens. And I did receive confirmation that you could do... It's and or, so you can leave a mix of the two. Huh, well, we have a good chunk of opening tokens up here. Maybe we'll do one opening token and two breaks. How about that? Ooh, this is a packed pool. Yes, it is. My goodness. Hmm. Wow, wow, wow. We've got four. Oh, man. All right. Maybe we're going to have to have our friend Solon stand up to attack this thing uh, during his turn. Well, actually, a lot of folks are going to be able to stand up. He might lead the charge so that he can take advantage of those tokens. Oh, please. Thank you. I guess I'll put that on the bottom, too. All right. Uh, wow. Okay. That wasn't so fun. Really? No fun? No. Oh, and you know what else? I just realized that wasn't even the enemy's turn. So the enemy gets to go now. Oh. No. No. Enemy gets to go. Pincher Pierce. It is, uh, it's going to be two dice at 10+. plus. The Pincher comes down trying to pin you to the ground. Target furthest titan in front in range. Well, the furthest titan in front in range, unfortunately, there's only one titan in front in range, and that is our poor friend, Solon. So Solon is going to be targeted yet again, as though he didn't have enough on his plate. Move and attack. Uh, if the attack hits, it does four danger. Gain one Ambrose took. So basically, like even if only one of these hits, it's going to do four danger, which is really three, because it's toying with us. Oh, no. All right, well... Let's go ahead and roll those. We have a 7 and a 3, and I do get two re-rolls, though, so I guess we'll give that a try. A 6 and a 1. Neither of those are going to roll, so that's going to net us 3 danger. You know what? That's going to put us, I believe... Oh, yeah, look at that. We are now in grave trauma territory already. Goodness. 
Right. And then uh, gain one Ambrosia token because, of course, we will. There we go. Got some of that sticky gunk on us. And at 3 plus Fate, it's knocked down. Well, I'm already knocked down, and I don't believe we have Fate yet. I could have spent Fate to reroll, but honestly, getting those 10s is going to be hard. Even if I did reroll, let's say I dodged the whole thing, then I'm going to have to destroy a piece of gear permanently. And I kind of like the gear I have. So I think that's what it's going to be. Let's look. Burning Heart. Subtract 2 Danger, gain 1 Rage, and stand up. You may immediately perform an attack and ignore attack responses. Woo! Woohoo! Wow! There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah! <laughs> okay, that's a good one. That is the best grave trauma I've ever seen. All right. Oh, excuse me. We are going... Oh, come on. Thank you. We are going to stand up Solon and immediately perform a mighty swing with our boat mace here. Yes, indeed we will. Let's roll. That's a four. Plus two is six. Plus all that is uh, going to hit. So, uh, yes, we are hitting. What are we hitting? The wiry leg, which has an instinct. Whether I hit it or miss, it's going to do this. Uh, yes, and we have four as our break value, which we have two here. We might be able to do this, friends. We have three dice rolling here, and of course we do get a rage for resolving an attack, which means we have one reroll, and we get to leave two tokens behind at the end of this, and uh, of course we get a break uh, from that. Here we go! Oh, nuts! What is that? Okay, we still have a chance with this. That is a two, right? Oh, come on, no, okay, no, no. You saw that. You all saw that. It was mostly on the two. I'm sorry, I'm counting it. Please! No Johns. You saw it. I think that should have been the way that it blanked out, but I accidentally dropped it on this die, which rotated it more. So we have two strikes, and we have two breaks. You know what that means? That means four, including these two breaks, which means we wound the wiry leg. Yes, that wiry leg. Get out of here. Bam. We have uh, two. Uh, we have two wounds on this monster so far. Uh, not a whole lot, but, of course, it's escalation time. One, two, three. Woo, we got lucky there. All right, set that there. One, two, three. Ah, oh, shuffled the two right up to the top. And of course, knock back seven, and we are going flat on our behinds again. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and knock down. Yep, that wiry leg, I guess it just bucked out at us, gave us a good little kicking, and that was that. So. Right, now we get to leave some tokens behind. We get to leave two from here and a break token. Ooh, that pool was good. So the one break token will stay. I think the other two we should probably leave as these uh, opening tokens so that whoever's attacking next is going to hit on like a six plus. So, uh, you know what else? One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, you know what? I could use those boots, stand him up, and have him go at him again. That might not be a bad idea, because remember as well, we I nearly forgot, we also have our precision token here. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, we'll put that knock down back to the way it's supposed to be. Right. All right. Well, uh, that's going to do it here. So let's go ahead and get our, uh, start our turns, shall we? Let's flip all of these. There we go. Yes, indeed. I think I will start with Solon. I will exhaust this and pay one fate, because we haven't really spent a whole lot of it, to stand ourselves up. And you know what else we'll do, since we're at such high danger and we have the fate? Let's use Rush, shall we? I get to move at least three spaces, attack at, uh, basically I get to move six in doing so. Place a plus one break token in the active pool. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. All right, Hermesium Pursuer, I know I just hit you, but... Uh, let's do it again, because we have a level 1 body part. We actually have a shot at this. So we get plus 2, 3, 4, 5. So really, we just need to roll like a 3 plus, And then we hit with this attack. So, uh, let's do it. Okay, a 5 is going to hit. Yes, indeed. But what are we hitting? That is the question. The Hind Pincher, which has 5 armor. Uh-oh. I think I only get to... Oh, and you know what? Let's get more Rage, because of course we do, which will unlock two re-rolls. I think we're still only rolling three of these red dice, though. That's the problem. Which means it's going to be kind of tough, but it's not impossible. On a failure, perform signature against the attacker. Oh, boy. And on a wound, immediately draw and resolve a flare card. So neither of these are great, but uh, I guess they are what they are. We have two and one there for Solon, and two re-rolls. Okay, fingers crossed, everybody. 
<gasps> One, two, three, four, five. Wow. Well, would you look at that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you like that, hind pincher? Yeah. There you go. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah, I kind of figured. And we'll do that. And these should all be level twos now. One, two, three. Yes. But, uh, wow, we are halfway. Actually, we're over halfway there. We are at three wounds out of the five that are required to actually end this battle as a win. So we're, uh, we're making it, guys. We're doing it. Right. So immediately draw and resolve a flare card. Yes. And uh, we'll go in here. Shuffle, shuffle. Ambrosia stain. Place each of your Ambrosia tokens on any gear, titan, or nemos ability, or the Kratos table. You cannot use those abilities. <gasps> no. Oh, no. So I have to pick a gear card not to use? Uh, that could be bad. <laughs> Especially at this point. Maybe the spring harness at this point. Uh, okay, wow. Okay, and then he has to do one as well. Let's put this back under the minor traumas. You have to pick one that you won't... Alright, fine. You know what? We'll do that. Uh, maybe we won't really end up needing that. Who knows? Okay. Okay, is that all that it does? Let's see. If this ability didn't trigger, move the pursuer. Okay, gotcha. Yep. All right. So, is there a way to get rid of these Ambrosia things? I did not see one, but maybe there is later. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Yes, it is. Hmm. Wow, you cannot use these abilities. So, I don't know. This one's worded in such a way as though it almost seems like it should, this is an ongoing effect. But maybe there's other cards that, that move it around. I don't know. Because, like, if I shuffle this away and I forget why those things are on there later, then that might be bad. But I guess I'll remember it uh, for the sake of this game. Okay. Wow. All right. Solon, uh, you are the MVP this round, it appears. So we've got that going for us. Yes. So Solon has attacked again, which is going to let him leave at least one break from here and then two tokens here and here. And you know what? Since I didn't use rerolls, I could do pushback if I wanted to. And you know what? I will, because that's going to knock him onto that uh, terrain. And we remember from the Hecaton fight, in doing so, uh, we roll a die, and maybe it helps the next attack. So let's see what happens. A nine! Wow! Okay, what does that do? <gasps> Minus two armor value for the next attack. Look at that. Bam! You know, this Hermesian Pursuer, this, honestly, this battle is going very well for us. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to... Would you move your fat butt? All right, there we go. Sorry, fellas. So I have knocked him into the columns, and maybe the columns is, are the columns are interfering with his legs or something. But in any case, he has minus two armor. Is there an excellent token that I can... Uh, yeah, look at that. Here we go. Oh, and good thing, too, because we have a level two coming up there. All right, we got two of those. And I get to leave one break for free and two tokens behind. I think this worked out pretty well for us. So let's go ahead and leave that behind again. And the break. Okay, wow. All right. Uh, unfortunately, our friends over here, they're going to be able to stand up, but they are, they are all very, very far out of range. One of the good things I did find out, uh, before I do that, one of the things I did find out is these tokens don't leave the pool until somebody actually attacks next. Um, so, like, because these people won't be able to attack, I don't end up actually losing those, uh, oh, but you know what, at the end of the round, I still think I do, so. Wait a minute! What will you learn? What will you learn? That your actions have consequences! Uh, too bad. But in any case, moving along, I suppose, let's have, uh, Ulyssia go next. Ulyssia... One, two, three, four, five, six. I could do five movement. Even if I tried six with a rush, it'd be out of range. So one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And then our friends finally get to stand up from their knockdowns. There we go. And there we go. Let's get rid of that because he's not knocked down. Uh, hmm. Yes, indeed. And I suppose I'll have Philoctera go first. Technically, they would stand up at the start of their turns, but uh, I think it's okay. I suppose I'll go one, two, three, four, five. Hiding out in the maze here. Maybe that'll uh, give us some sort of tactical advantage. One, two, three, 
four, uh, four, five. Ooh, that's not good, because he likes to go to the center of the board. Maybe I'll actually hang out right there for right now. Until such a time as we know what this thing's up to, maybe I don't want to get too close to the center of the board or too close to the Ambrosia. So I think that's what I'll do exactly. And I'll flip these all over. Here we go. And uh, whew, level 2 AI. Here we go. Dra drag and drop. The pursuer wants to take you for a ride. Oh my gosh! Ah! <laughs> oh, that's terrible. It's a one die attack on an 8 plus target priority target in range. Speaking of priority target, it is now most certainly Solon once more, which is not good. Okay, so he wants to take Solon for a ride. At 3 plus fate, it is plus one die. There's only two fate there, so okay. So he's going to be rolling one die, hitting on an 8 plus, and what's going to happen to us? Move and attack each hit does two danger. And after attack, if danger was dealt, push back seven and knock down. Of course, we've got to get get that stuff. Well, so now we might want to potentially actually lose a piece of gear. We're not going to be able to use the spring harness anyway because it's ambrosia soaked. Yeah, you know what? That's interesting. So you know what? Let's go ahead and roll. That's a three. I do have two re-rolls, though, so let's go ahead and use those. That's a four. Let's go ahead and roll again. That's an 8, which is going to dodge. And because of Killjoy, if you completely evade the attack, uh, then you lose one piece of gear. And I will lose the uh, Spring Harness because it's soaked in Ambrosia. I presume I still keep this token. I don't think that's like a way I get rid of it. Even though thematically, if the item is what has the Ambrosia on it and I get rid of the item, you would think. Uh, I just don't know what's intended yet, so... I'm going to play as though you're unable to do that. So let's see what we can do. Hmm. Oh, and then actually, because after attack, because we didn't actually get hit by it, we don't have to deal this because we did not get any danger dealt to us. Very good. All right. So uh, as I was saying, yes, we do not have to resolve that. Very good. All right. So that means it's our turns again. And uh, whew, we are... Uh, Oh, it's too bad that thing's there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, even if she moves six. Uh, just thinking out loud, because that next spot is going to get this. We do not have any tokens in the pool, because I still think you lose them at the end of the round, uh, from what I remember. So, uh, wow. Hmm. I guess our friend here is the one who's the most set up to potentially... Uh, that's going to be tough. But we do have this going for us. So I guess with no tokens and with them all out of range, Solon is sort of the best person for potentially hitting because Solon also does get to roll that extra die potentially. So I suppose let's go ahead, Solon, and uh, what are we going to do here, Solon? Let's try, I don't know if, yeah, I guess attacking from the, well, I don't know, maybe I should get him to push me back toward my friends. One, two, three, four. Mm, nah, because that'll throw me through a column potentially. Let's go ahead and attack from right here. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. That's a four. Plus two is six. Plus one is seven, which is so close, but is not quite enough. So we're going to have to spend some fate. So we need a five plus. Ah, six. A six will hit. And what are we hitting? Is it another eight? Okay, it's a six. All right. Abnormally small head. Uh, yeah, I was actually thinking that, looking at the uh, the model here, but uh, I'm glad that the game is, or the creature is aware of that. A failure. Perform signature against the attacker. Wound. Immediately draw and resolve a flare card. It would have been a good idea, I think, to use that rush ability, but since I'm already adjacent, I don't know that I would be able to, like, move one, two, three, four, and then be able to get that, even though it would be an excellent ability to give us one more of those breaks. All right, but we do get to roll two for the boat mace, then one here, and one because we are now at five range. So on four dice, we need to be able to get six of these break symbols without, unfortunately, any um, any of our uh, break tokens. So it's going to be tough, but we do have two re-rolls. Okay, so we have four already right now. That's, that's a good start, but we're not quite uh, to where we need to be. So let's go ahead and use re-roll number one. Okay, and reroll number two. Honestly, if that's even a two, it doesn't matter because it's not going to hit. Okay. Objection! Wait a minute. Aha! Uh -huh. 
Yes, I'm so silly. This six is actually a four, my friends. Meaning uh, that we are going to wound this spot. Immediately draw and resolve a flare card. Uh-oh. -uh. That's no fun. But uh, this is a level two body part, which means... Oh, good. Wow. Okay, so we actually got a small mercy there. And then this level two is going to go for level three. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Uh, yes, uh, and we do, of course, get to leave one break token and then two of these tokens here. And if I want, since I didn't actually have to use the rerolls, I could push back again. And you know what? I will, because look at that. We have yet another one of those uh, columns down there. So, yes, that column. Can I grab it? Yes, I did. Look at that. That worked out okay. Which means, uh, potentially, we're going to add two more of these. Um, I mean, I have to roll a 9 or a 10 to actually make it happen. But let's just see what benefits we can get. Maybe something good. A six. All right. Let's see what that does for us. Okay. Minus one. All right. It's not, it's not so bad because remember, we are actually now at a level one card here, which up to this point has been fours and fives. Excuse me. That means that's going to be three or four next time that we attack this creature. Yes. But of course we do have to uh, immediately draw and resolve a flare card. So let's actually look at what the flare card's going to be. And actually, you know what, I think I need to actually resolve the flare card before doing all of that. Let's find out. Gain as many danger as uh, you have Ambrosia tokens. If this ability... Okay, so I'm going to take one danger, looks like. So uh, there we go. Which is not going to trigger a uh, trauma card this time around. So, uh, And it would have been nice to know if I could have gotten rid of this when I got rid of that piece of gear. But I just don't know yet. So I'm going to play hard mode. Yes, indeed. Right, so we now have... That going for us, which means we still are allowed to do the pushback, which means we still trigger this excellent ability, helping out whoever will be attacking next. One, two, three, four, five, six. <gasps> now that we've pushed them back, we can actually attack with Philoctera, perhaps. So maybe that's what we'll do next. Oh, Philoctera, who has the Great Tree Club and is ready to roll. So we're going to get one Rage for resolving an attack. And we have two dangers, so let's go ahead and spend one fate to do our rush ability. Oh, we should leave tokens. Uh, let's leave one break, at least because we have to for our club, and I get to leave two more. Let's leave two openings. Because the actual hit dice that uh, the club uses is really strong. And I'll have to spend one fate to actually swing the club. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So we have come up here, which is going to add yet another break token. So we have two breaks, two uh, openings, and we are going after a level one body part. Friends, I think we might be able to do this. Let's give this a roll. <laughs> well, <laughs> unless we roll stuff like that. Okay, and let's try this again. Please don't screw this up. A three? What? You blew it! I can't believe this. Gains minus one for their next attack. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, man, she blew it, guys. Uh, wow. Yep, she sure did. She blew it, and I can't re-roll that now. Wow. Okay, uh, hit fail, though. It's not a complete loss. Hit fail, I do get to leave one break token out there. But I think I lose this, because it says for the next attack, so even though... It was not a successful attack. It was an attack. So I'm assuming that that's gone now. Oh. That's too bad. Okay. Moving right along. Thanks a lot, Philoctera. I, I mean, I guess not everyone can be Solon, can they? All right. Herodotus. Herobrotus. Yes. What are we going to do with you? We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. How's about? Yeah. And um, I suppose that's it. And then last but not least, Ulyssia. One, two, three, four, five, maybe. We'll get you right there. You're definitely out of range here, so. Oh, boy. Bum, bum, bum. It's the end of the round, so this goes away. And we get to see our first level three from this thing. Wing dance. Ooh, he's doing a little ballerina spin there. Yes, indeed. The primordial moves uh, with all. I'm sorry. The primordial moves all its weight onto one side and delivers the mother of all haymakers. I'll say. Uh, target all titans in zone two. Uh oh. Oh boy. Well, that's going to be two of our friends on a three uh, plus of the 
fate. You knocked back seven to the right and then knocked down after final attack performed signature. My goodness. All right. Well, let's go ahead and begin. It said three die or four dice, which is actually three because we are toying. And then each hit is going to uh, leave an ambrosia. Oh, gain one ambrosia. Each hit does two danger. Oh, boy. All right. Well, let's go ahead and roll these. We, in one fell swoop, this monster might catch back up to us. Is that two, three, and three? Ugh. That's horrible. Is it worth the fate to re-roll? I'll try one, I guess. Four. Okay, well, I see where this is going. Three, four, five, six. Wow, so we just took six danger off of that, which is going to net us a grave trauma, which we will not resolve yet. Uh, and then we are going to resolve it against our friend... Oh, that was uh, Philoctra, so let's resolve it against Solon, who has re-rolls, so... Maybe they'll come in to help here. Alright, a 10 and an 8. I think those are both going to dodge. Yes, they are. Do I want to try doing the rerolls to dodge the third one? You know what? I'm at the point where... I If I took 2 right now, it's going to net me a grave trauma. But I'd have to lose a piece of gear. So maybe uh, the sail splash. Alright, let's just take the 2. There we go. Taken two danger, which is also going to get me a grave trauma. Plus, last time around, the grave trauma uh, helped us out. So, you know, we got that going for us. Right. And uh, that's going to give us both an ambrosia token as well. I suppose I should uh, indicate that. So we have one there. And we have one here on our friend. Yes. Right. And let's see what else. That's there. So this is one of the things I, I get a little stuck on. I took the danger. Now, do I resolve those cards? Because I heard on team attacks, so that one person doesn't break it all, you, like, resolve all of it first. But I'm not quite clear on, like, how exactly that works. Like, do you mean all of this? Like, I do all of this right here, and then perform... Because I think perform final attack ha is supposed to happen after you do all of these. So it must mean that it, you perform all of this on everyone so i think i'm resolving it correctly so far that i've done so let's see what happens to philoctera who uh looks like she's going to potentially suffer knockback seven to the right and knock it down but uh, i've taken danger and uh oh you know what i don't think i revealed this before the after attack step though so she's going to get knocked to the right and to the right from the monster is going to be down here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and knock down. There we go. And uh, he is also going to be knocked to the right, which is going to send him through the Ambrosia Pool, which isn't so good. Uh, which potentially will net him yet another Ambrosia token. Let's see. And, of course, he does have the fate sufficient to get that effect happening. So, let's see. Here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and knock down. There we go. And then uh, we resolve our cards, presumably. So let's see. Philoctera. Uh, oh, she's going to, until the end of battle, she attacks at minus one uh, armor value if she's attacking from a labyrinth tile. Very cool. C pattern. Look at the top BP and AI cards. You may put each back onto the top of their respective decks or into the discard pile and then gain one scroll thingy. Not sure what the scroll thingy is, but sounds good. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at these. Well, so we have a level 1 here. We're probably going to want to keep that up there. Oh, and now we get to look here. So we know it's an armor value of 4. Fail is just a knockdown, and wound is a signature against the attacker. But we only have one more wound to do. Let's see. If we put this underward, we're going to shuffle, which may shuffle wing dance or something crazy back up at us. Ambrosial spurt. The creature reveals its abdomen. Ambrosial spurt from the blackened belly. Uh, ooh, and it has one of those cool Kingdom Death style uh, targeting parameters, the special target zones. And on a 5 plus of fate, it does kill joy, which I assume just means it erases one of your pieces of gear. Wow. I'm tempted because I know there are level 1 cards in here, but we could just get that wing dance back up. Oh. You know what? No pain, no gain. There we go, and it's a level 1. Wow, excellent. We made the right call, it turns out, my friends. And uh, let's make sure we roll for our Ambrosia. Don't give it to us. 
That's a five, which is going to give us an Ambrosia token. We have three of these things, which means we are well on our way to our Ambrosia poisoning. Oh, boy. Let's get our die out from under there. My goodness. Ambrosia, Ambrosia, Ambrosia. Yikes. Right. But uh, now the enemy's turn has concluded. So now it's our turn, which means we get to... Oh, no. It's not concluded, actually. After... It's a final attack. It's going to perform signature because none of us, none of those things interrupted it as far as I know. Uh, pincher strike. Target closest Titan in front in range. So in front, uh, in range. So I guess that's going to be our friend here because he has unlimited range. Well, I don't know. It's sort of a tie here. And actually, you know what? I think our friend here still has the uh, the priority target token. Oh, there it is. Yep. So I think he's actually going to go after our Poor friend Solon again, which is just terrible. Three dice hitting on ten plus a piece. <sighs> okay. Might need to use those rerolls this time. Okay, there's one dodge. All right, let's go ahead and use our rerolls. Wow, okay, so. Ooh, and that's a critical evade, which means opening two uh, per our shield. So even if, this, even if this is the end of our friend here, uh, he is leaving the door open for our friends to uh, avenge him so that's good uh wow okay and the seven i do not believe dodges because they get to eight oh no ten plus sorry <laughs> yes each hit does one danger because of course it is toying with us and then uh, it would knock us seven to the right knock down if we survive but you know there's no guarantee that we will because we are now at the point where we are drawing uh did i get i don't think i gave him the danger yet so now we are at 10 meaning it's obel time you died. Okay, well, I don't want that to happen, so let's try our Sail Spolus. Since we have it, let's uh, spend a fate to do so. And you died. Yes, indeed. Uh, so it turns out Solon, so long to Solon, uh, he, he tried his best. Now, I don't know if these still, like, remain in play as far as counting toward the flare stuff i'm gonna play as though they do because uh, it seems as though that that might be what we should do oh that's too bad because he was also the one with the five the five or four bed dice i guess he's attacked with all four but it is what it is okay goodbye friend hopefully our our friends here however are in a primed position to finish the job hmm i suppose let's just delete his card and our friends are all ready to go. Unfortunately, our friend Philoctra here, though, is knocked down. So, and let's put that on the falling side. Which means they are just going to have to lay there for a while. Which means any attacks that are going to occur are going to have to be from our friends here. Hmm. I suppose this person is a little further ahead in the progression of things. So maybe Ulyssia should be the one to try a first strike. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're already at range six from the monster. Let's go ahead and try once more with our ballista gun, which is actually hitting on plus four right now. Three plus four is seven, which means it's one shy of what we need. Because of course it is. All right, come on. Are you serious? Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, okay. Uh, you know, Ulyssia, you really... That ballista gun and you are not getting along. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. I guess it uh, doesn't even get to leave tokens, which means these were an absolute waste. Wow. That's very unfortunate. All right, we do still have Herobrotus over here. Herobrotus could attack. We do have the whale knives here, after all. With rage. Okay. Okay. Uh, the problem I hate is, though, I want to keep that here for someone who can wound it. Maybe, actually, I won't have him attack. I know that seems crazy, but, like, this person will have a much better chance of attacking or, and wounding. This person will have a much better chance of attacking and wounding. So, actually, I don't think I will. I think what I'm going to do is not be right in front of this thing. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go right there. That's what I'm going to do. I know Herodotus has uh, been a little bit more shy than usual, but uh, I'm trying my best not to screw this up. And lastly, of course, 
we will flip this to go to the standing up position. All right. Flip, flip, and flip. Okay. Now, moving along. A level 1 AI card. Not so bad. Oh, Disdain. We've seen this before. Oh, but it's going to make it harder to hit him. Target the priority target in range. Speaking of which, who is that now? That is... Ah, yes it is. It's actually our friend Ulyssia, who is now the highest rage individual. So Ulyssia over there is now the Disdain target. You know, interestingly, I notice it doesn't say uh, for... Uh, him to move and attack or anything like that. So, oh, I guess after judgment, it's going to move back to the center of the board. Yes, so courage and will are added here, but she has, oh, one will, so I guess she'll get to add one to the value, and I get to roll two dice. Two dice looking for a seven plus with the will bonus. Oh, boy. Neither of those are going to hit. I'm just going to take it, which means I'm getting a Dread card. Here we are, the Dread. Ugh. Which is just terrible, because, remember, that's the one that does minus two precision tokens, and I have uh, minus two if I'm not attacking from rear weak spot or vantage point. <sighs> Darn. Oh, that's not it. Precision. Here we go. There we go. There we are. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Uh, and uh, we have been disdained, which means move to the center of the board, then turn to face the most titans. There we go. We're back in the center, and the most titans facing, I have now learned, uh, means in front. So that also, that just encompasses this entire area here. Right. Okay. And now it's our turns again. I could have our friend Philoctra stand up first, uh, but of course she is way out of the way from being able to actually go and attack this creature. So I suppose we'll set that there. I guess we'll move a little closer. Two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Right, oh, so moving at five spaces. I think that's about the extent of what this character can do. I'm sorry, this character can do. It would be nice to get that advantage if we possibly could, but that will be uh, a turn or two away yet. Hmm. I suppose... Do I want to keep waiting to try and have our friends take advantage of that level 1 body part? I think this person will not be able to hit it and wound it, given, uh, given what they have going on here. And I suppose our friend here would be able to hit it, but I don't know about wounding it. No, I sure don't. So maybe what I'll do is I will hang tight with them a little bit as well. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Maybe. I guess that's not horrible. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. So I kind of want them clustered a little closer together so, so that they're not having to run all across the board. Excuse me. Okay. Okay, that's it. And another level one AI card. So, uh... Very good. Ambrosia Touch. Okay. Okay. I don't know what is up, but uh, people are calling me left and right. So I apologize for the uh, incessant interruptions, but hopefully that shall be the last. Target. Target Titan in a blind spot. Uh, currently, there is not one. So let's move on to the next step. Target closest Titan in sight and range. The closest one in sight and range is our friend over here. Goodness. All right. So he moved right over there. Move and attack. It's going to be uh, three dice, I believe. Oh, you know, he's still actually under three fates, so it's going to be two dice. Uh, hitting on eight plus, each hit does one danger for each hit, gaining an Ambrosia token. Ugh. All right, moving that. Let's see what we got. Seven and three. Neither of those are going to be dodges, so I would be taking two danger and two Ambrosia tokens if I, uh, if I went ahead with it, which is still going to keep me in the minor trauma area. And the higher I push my fate, the more... You know what, let's do at least one. Let's see if we can get at least one of these to dodge. No, okay, certainly not. All right, uh, I don't want to push the fate too much harder. So, yes, we're going to do uh, two, I'm sorry, uh, was it two danger? Yeah, two danger, and then uh, an ambrosia token, unfortunately. So, there we go, two, three. Get one of those, get an ambrosia token. Here we go, so he now has two. So there's a lot of ambrosia in play if we're considering these in play, and I think maybe we are. Hmm. And, uh, I suppose... Okay. 
Oh, I should actually get two Ambrosia tokens. That's right. I was trying to remember. I was like, I think I might get one more. Yes. And uh, Minor Trauma. Gash. Oh, no. Suffer a uh, danger and draw another one of these and then shuffle this into the deck. Okay, so we're getting a major trauma now. Don't be dead. Maze Eruption. Place a Z Labyrinth under me. I can't because I'm actually already in a Labyrinth tile and they cannot overlap. So, uh, basically nothing happens. I wish something good was coming to help us, but unfortunately not. All right. And then uh, after attack, if danger was dealt, push back four and knock down. Well, oh no. And look at this. One, two, three, four, which is going to knock me through that. There we go. And I get knocked down, which is going to net me one danger for having crashed into that darn tile there. Goodness. Okay. So he's knocked down. Let me give him his card so I don't forget where in the knockdown he is at. He's at falling. Right. So moving right along. I suppose next... Oh, man, we just got to finish him, don't we? We just have to take, take the plunge, I think. Because right now we're just... We're kind of just wasting our time treading water Philoctera let's flip that I'm gonna go one two three four five there we are and that's about all Philoctera can do Ulyssia is going to go one two three wait four five two three four five okay so at range five which means we can shoot with this gun. Oh, but the problem is, if we're shooting with this gun, that's going to reduce this bit, but it's still going to be at minus two. Minus two to hit means I got to roll a 10 plus. Yeah, wait a minute. I don't know. That's a terrible idea. Maybe I don't want to attack at all. Maybe we just want to move a little bit. So I'm going to reduce that back because we're not attacking right now. Nope. No, we are not. And then, last but not least, Herobrotus is just going to uh, maybe start considering standing back up, maybe. Oh, no. Oh, boy. We know what that is. Wing dance. Yes, indeed, we do know. Right. Attack. And it's going to do plus one dice. It's really going to be four dice against our friend Herobrotus. Youch. All right. Four dice here. We have nine. And then we have three, four, and one. Uh, three, four, and ones are currently going to hit. Each hit does three danger. And then you gain an Ambrosia token. Oh, my goodness. Honestly, even if I spent this to to change it, I'm going to be at Obel territory no matter what. So, I guess I'll just take all that, get some more Ambrosia. So he has four Ambrosia tokens now. And, uh, unfortunately, we are going to be drawing an Obel. You live! Okay, so, uh, he actually lived. Shockingly. Oh, that's unfortunate, though, because he's going to get knocked to the right and knocked down. So, because he's getting knocked to the right... Boom, there he goes. He's going to be landing right in the uh, pool, which, as we learned from here, uh, is if you end your involuntary move on an Ambrosia pool, gain an Ambrosia token, giving him four... Oh, no, that's one, two, three, four, five. That's his fifth. So you know what that means? Herobrotus is dead. Wow. And then after uh, final attack, perform signature. Signature. Cl target closest titan in front in range. Closest titan in sight in range. Well, we know who that is. That's going to be our friend right here. Which at least is going to line us up here to maybe potentially finish this. Technically, when I lost the first titan, I could have decided the battle was a loss and quit. But we're not quitters here at Five of Clubs. So, uh, we <laughs> unfortunately are going to get uh, pinched here, it looks like. So we have three dice, and we are going to deal... Three potential damage to our friend Ulyssia. Maybe Ulyssia can dodge this or that. Let's find out. We have a nine, which is a dodge. This is two hits coming our way. She actually has no danger yet. Um, oh, right, she's a ranged character who also has not been hitting. So, you know, we got that going for us. Uh, yeah, so that's going to do two danger at three plus fate. She definitely has that. Knock down seven to the right and knock... Uh, knock down. So the right here, so that's my left, but it's facing me, so to the right means she's just going to get bang right there. Bam, bam, bam. So the two uh, danger came from the two hits, and the third came from slamming into this wall, which actually I don't think we resolve until after we draw this thing. Let me just check. Mm, it's kind of hard to say because it's part of the same sort of uh, step here, but let's find out. 
What happens? We get another uh, L Labyrinth tile. Wow, we got uh, the Labyrinth is just very active during this battle. Maybe the Labyrinth Thoros is nearby, so here we go. We'll set that there. Whoops, and we will set this in such a way. Mm, oh, that's really bad. That's really bad. Well, none of these are great. Neither of these placements are uh, ideal, I see. And uh, knocked down. Bam! So, slammed into a labyrinth, which caused another labyrinth wall to rise up. And uh, that is that. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. No fun. All right. And it looks like Philoctera, you are the only person who can act right now, Philoctera. So right now our friend over here is not only dreaded or dreading this monster, and now I see why, but is knocked down and is going to remain that way for some time. Sears Guard is going to, or Philoctera is going to activate, and Philoctera is going to move. Let's go ahead and, you know what, let's spend a fate to use uh, the trait here. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, excuse me, there's four, which is going to allow us to add one break to the Kratos pool, which hopefully will help us hit. Okay. Come on. A lot is riding on this right now. Oh, come on. Couldn't you have just rolled to the zero? Why could you not have done that? Oh, and of course we have to spend one fate to activate the weapon and a reroll. <laughs> two. Two is a miss. The two is a miss. Yes, it is. Which means, uh, since it's a miss, it uh, will not hit. And uh, that token is lost to us because it's the end of the round. Yes, it is. Uh, or technically, it's not yet the end of the round. I guess she gets to go and she gets to flip this from the falling side to the standing up side. And uh, level 2 AI, here we come. Drag and drop. Oh, not this again. The pursuer <laughs> wants to take you for a ride. Target priority, target in range. Oh, and you know what I should have done? I should have increased rage for resolving an attack but that actually has not overcome the three rage from here so he is going to take our four friend for our poor friend ulysia for a ride with one die at least oh that's not good oh two dice looks like actually because uh she is above three fate for sure okay so that's a dodge it's one hit which means uh we're going to take three danger if danger is dealt from this attack push back seven and knock down i could spend fate to re-roll but we really actually probably need it for our weapons potentially or maybe even for the analyticos module yeah you know what it, we might save it for the analyticos module so uh yes two danger or three danger no it is two danger because uh it's toying with us and then uh push back seven and knock down well oh push back seven. Oh boy that means it's going to be moving one two three and it's going to turn for uh I'm not sure how this pushback would work cuz when it moves here it would like do this. I guess it would do an extra danger because it crushed me. 5 6 7 All right, so we do an extra danger for that. So we're going to get three danger altogether, I believe, because we get two danger from this. And a danger from that as well. So I suppose that is what it is. And uh, let's get our major trauma card. Here we go. Whew. Maze eruption. More maze. Are you serious? Okay. It's uh, the O maze tile this time around. So here we go. Let's go ahead and set that right there. Whoops. Sorry. Not trying to take the ambrosia pool with us. Okay. Push back seven. It's already knocked down. So... That is what it is. Wow, look at this. This is going to be quite a pain to try and get to this character. One, two, three, four, five. Ugh. Darn this labyrinth. Darn it. Okay. Alrighty. Well, uh, I guess that means it's our turn. Ugh. This isn't good. And I'll delete that so I don't forget. So she could stand up. Maybe it's going to have to be up to her. And her analyticos module. Wow. And the dread. It's going to be tough. I can't get behind this thing, can I? Nope, because he's blocking the way. One, two, three, four, five. Can move right there. Which means I'm still going to be attacking at like 
Minus four, though. That means I have to hit on a ten. Maybe, since I have to hit on a ten, maybe I'll use the javelin instead. One, two, three, four. And there we go. And I'll attack right here. How about that? Get two chances at it. Yep, uh, that's about what I thought. But it at least gets us a rage. Uh, which, hopefully, maybe we can later convert into being able to leave behind some darn tokens. Okay. Right, and then uh, Philoctera is not going to have a whole lot to do. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. So now we are both here and ready. It's a level one AI card, so at least we have that going for us. Okay. I keep saying that, don't I? About stuff going for us. All right. Uh, Pincher Pierce. Yes, the Pincher comes down trying to pin you to the ground. Target furthest Titan in front and range. So he's looking this way, which means he is going to go at our friend uh, here, and he is going to make us roll two dice, maybe three. No, it's just going to result in knockdown. So two dice. Uh, each hit does four, and then you'll gain an Ambrosia token if this stuff hits you. My goodness. Whoops. All right, so it looks like we have a six and a three. Neither of those are going to dodge. That's going to be three danger. And gain an Ambrosia token, so we'll get one of those. There we are. Three danger. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, my goodness. Got a grave trauma coming up. Oh, Theseus logic. Until the end of battle, you may ignore labyrinth tiles for the purpose of voluntary movement and attack. Wow. Okay, so she just says she's done with dealing with all this maze stuff. If only we had that right over here. Right, friends? Yeah, for sure. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. I think I have a plan. All right, and then gain an Ambrosia token. Let's make sure we do that. And, uh... I don't remember if I did or not, so let's do it. And knock down. Oh, yeah, I wish you could knock this thing down. Goodness. Right, so I suppose it's time for us to go. We do have this and this, meaning this person has a pretty decent chance of hitting. <sighs> Going to get our six rage. We're working on our rage here. And let's roll, or let's uh, move out. One, two, three, four, five. And, of course, let's go ahead and use our fate to do the rush ability allowing us one break up here all right come on the power of the boat mace three why why do you do this four five six all right come on please that looks like a, all right that roll was terrible come on five six seven eight Eight. Okay, so the reason I re-rolled that other one is because it was already on one, and it just spun in the air. That wasn't a good roll at all. Sometimes the rolls in this game kind of do that, and uh, I think that's one of the issues with the rolling algorithm, which is why I hit the the roll button a few times. It's supposed to throw like a new spin on it, but as you can see, it only spun it on one uh, axis. So I think it's not cheat. Oh, wait, this isn't Solon, is it? This is Philoctera. This is Philoctera who should be getting that. And we'll have had to uh, get one more fate going up there, which means, which means, oh, you know what? I wouldn't have been able to attack with this weapon and rush, so I'm going to have to not do the rush ability. Sorry about that. Not do the rush ability, and I have to swing my weapon here by paying a fate, which is going to get me one of these Moiros cards. What's this? Fated to die. Spawn the adversary. Move it two spaces toward the Argo. Well, actually... The adversary is here. We're, uh, we're facing him right now. So, uh, yikes. Okay, but uh, the five over here is a hit. Oh, wait, no, it's not on this, is it? A five plus zero is uh, not a hit because we need an eight plus. My goodness. So it's actually not. And we're out of fate. Oh, this is not going to be good, friends. This is really falling apart on us. We were doing so well. That's, so, that's unfortunate. All right, Ulyssia. Uh, yes, Ulyssia has... Sorry, she should have a knockdown card. And she's going to the... She's going from falling to standing up. And uh, that's all she can do. So now it's our friend's turn. He's going to reshuffle his AI deck. And we got Disdain. Okay, target the priority target in sight. Priority target is actually tied for Ulyssia right now. So Ulyssia remains the priority target. And uh, I suppose we're going to roll two dice here. A one and a six. Neither of those hit. So the thing is, 
Two hits, gain dread. She actually already has dread. So do you gain dread again? I'm not sure how that works. You're double dreading the monster, maybe? I guess until such a time as I know otherwise, I guess maybe you can. Okay. There we are. We, uh, we are now double dreading this monster. So we're at minus four, and then we have to be in the blind spot or anything, or else it's actually minus six, which means that person can no longer hit uh, ever. Or I think maybe a ten, like in Kingdom Death, counts as a hit, like all the time, whereas a one always counts as a miss. So uh, it is what it is. Oh, and on six uh, plus, it's going to do the Killjoy trait. So I have to lose one of these things. You know what? This makesheath has been useless. So goodbye, makesheath. That's that. Sorry, Killjoy. And then move to the center of the board and turn to face the most titans. So he's going to go one, two, three, four. And uh, I guess facing the most titans would be like that. Yep. Wow. So this weapon I can no longer use, unfortunately. I now have to use my fists, I presume, if I want to uh, attack further. So I guess we'll... Give that a try, because this person has not stood up yet. Oh, you know what? I guess it couldn't hurt to let this person try to go first. Yeah. Yeah, let's let Ulysses try to go first. Maybe if she gets lucky, she can roll a 10. Or really, uh, a 10 on one of these two dice. Let's find out. Uh, a 9 and a 2. So, it is what it is. And I was attacking with the spear, so that... Uh, it does not work for us. Or, you know, what I could do as well. Uh, it's too late now. I've already resolved the turn. Maybe I should have started by refreshing the Analyticos module, exhausting it to put an accuracy token up here to maybe help out our friend. It's too bad I didn't think to do that earlier. Gosh. All right. All right. So now it's our friend over here who is now out of fate. So we're not able to do any of that. So we're going to go one, two, three, four is the closest I can get to being able to attack. We have uh, two dice here at plus zero, so we need eight or more. There's a nine. Okay, so that is a hit. And unfortunately, that man, we're going to only be rolling three dice because that's one of these things. That is no terror. That is just that's just terrible. Wow. All right, so we have two here, uh, or sorry, three dice. One, two, and then uh, because we increased our rage, we're at three dice. <sighs> here we go. Long, oh, abnormally long arm. We know it's an armor value of four. On three dice, that's going to be tough to get, but we'll, uh, we have no other choice, frankly. Uh, yes, so we'll go ahead and roll that. We do have some re-rolls. We have re-roll there and a re-roll there. So we're at two right now. Two breaks. We're at three breaks. Four breaks! Oh, goodness! We finally did it. We did it. We've lost two titans in the process and it was quite a frustrating bit at the end but somehow or another using our fists we were able to give a left a right and another left to this hermesian pursuer and send it packing well not really he, he's teased us so i guess he is satisfied his <clears throat> satisfied his bloodlust and has now moved on to uh to haunt us another day and with that out of the way let's give a few moments to our final thoughts on mr hermesi here Wow, what a toughie. I mean, the latter half of finishing it off was primarily a problem with spacing and uncooperative dice rolls, but if they had been cooperative, we'd have chased off this bird brain 15 minutes sooner. Those level 1 body parts are no joke, though, the lowest being 4 armor and each of them having both a wound and a fail response. If it weren't for his toying trait, we'd have easily been picked apart. I do not look forward to facing this thing when it's going serious, at least not before I'm ready. There were some interesting interactions here. I really liked the Ambrosia stuff, particularly that time when it gunked up our gear. I also liked that some of the emergent maze tiles were able to keep us from dipping into the Ambrosial pools, turning something maybe bad into something potentially good. Those two column terrain pieces were just as integral to Bird Boy's defeat as the Titans seemed to be. I usually forget the pushback thing, but this time it really paid off. Solon was a relentless machine, doing most of the wounds to the moth-winged mordial, but the day would not have been won without Philoctera casting aside her unwieldy tree club and going in for the final haymaker punch. In my headcanon, her arms were getting buffer each time she swung the tree club, so even though she couldn't hit the monster with it very much, she was increasing her strength and speed without it. 
I maintain equal parts curiosity and dread regarding the level 2 and level 3 AI and BP cards that are in store for us. We only saw the faintest glimpses into each, but I refuse to spoil it for myself. What happens in the showdown stays in the showdown. I'm also one part sad that we're at the end of our journey into ATO here. We've wrestled with the hundred armed Hecaton, tussled with a maze touched Taurus, and wrapped it up with an avian stick figure encounter. Unfortunately, at least for now, we faced the challenges of the TTS demo and seemingly survived the experience. I eagerly look forward to seeing more from the game and making more videos about it all. Thank you all so much for watching and showing support. Thanks to Into the Unknown and Marson for having helped clear up some of the rules troubles. And thanks to folks like Paul Mayer in the comments for fascinating discussions. Q122 can't come quickly enough. Until next time, fellow Argonauts, may the fates be kind to you all. Oh, and for anyone interested, I wrote up a short story on the Aeon Trespass Odyssey forums a few months ago, introducing a custom adversary pitch for the game. When I have a fuller understanding of the entire game in motion, perhaps we'll see this foe here on the channel. I'll throw a link in the description for that below. Until next time, take care and happy gaming everyone!